God is my light, my strength in all my fights. Babatunde Okumboa, a.k.a. OJB Jezro, was born in June 1966. For the prolific producer, music started back in 1986. You know it, it's true, put a ring around your finger, no more would I let it linger, as we tingle linger along the way, and say, ooh, 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 you got me saying? The singer has been a creative force behind the numerous hits of countless number of artists, from Rugged Man, Two-Face Edibia, Jasman Olofi, the late Namalos, Iyaya, Yemi Alade, Joel, to mention a few. P um, is an individual who is um, selfless. I've known him for close to 20 years and um, I've been part of the whole movement of the Point Beats Records, um, OJB just, um, production. And um, I've been part of the metamorphosis of the industry through him, whereby we had a whole lot of artists come past through him, from Rugged Man to the Band to Two Face and all of that, you know. Um, he's somebody who is um, passionate about what he does and he has that human feeling. He has that um, feeling of um, trying to help somebody who is in need. You know, way back then, the studio was open for everybody to come. You know, as long as you got talent, he was just looking out for talent and helping talent. So he's he's a selfless human being, very passionate about what he does, down to earth, very humble. You know, he lends a helping hand each time, over and over again. Even even if we come ten times, he still want to help you. I mean, we we are gonna really really miss him. He's a great loss to the industry, to we his um uh, contemporaries and family and friends all together. First, I was his. Artist, tell everybody that way. I was an artist in you. Then I became his friend, and then I became his son. Let me put it that way. And I became his very good friend. You know, and our relationship has been was and has been very good. We've done a lot of things together, even outside music. We also had a little part in sourcing for, uh, you know, sponsors for his TV show that he was part of back then, Blue Voids, that was on TV back then. So, hey. Basically, we did a whole lot together, and I did my best to, you know, carry the name Silver Tones, uh, Street. Streets. We just, I did my best to push that too. So hey, that's why there's no day, nowhere you go. If you mention Rugged Man, you won't talk about OJB. Um, he's a very gifted person. Yeah, uh, he's a very gifted person. He has played a major role um, in the entertainment industry. I met him in that era where, where I think. Um, the, the whole story started, uh, that is uh, regarding his creativity, regarding his production. As far as the entertainment industry is concerned today in Nigeria, you cannot talk about Nigerian music industry without the mention of OJB because he's played a tremendous role as to actualizing the industry and where the industry is today. I would describe my relationship with OJB as uh, a brother, brotherly thingy. Um, like recently, we were working on a new song. We are working on a new song that he actually was the one that was writing the song and producing the song as well. And he had already done his verse. He had already done his verse and it's just for me to come and do my own part. So I've been always like, I'll come later, I'll come later, and I'll come later thinking. And I heard the sad news, so. It wasn't really, it wasn't a funny thing though. First of all, um, describe him straight up, I would say, a very kind-hearted individual. That's from the way I knew him, besides his awesome talent. Um, I came into the industry doing R&B, something that many people didn't believe in. But meeting OJB gave me a whole lot of confidence to do what I had to do. And, he, you know, sometimes I tell people, I say, now we have beat makers. This person on the beat, this person on the beat. OJB is one person I called a music producer. He inspired you. You, you, you sing. You don't, he doesn't make beat for you to sing. No, you sing what you want and he will find the right music for it. He's someone I felt very attached to. 
musically and for the fact that he was so kind-hearted you see i tell people people don't know that ojb would have been much much richer than he was if he was a materialistic person like he wanted to charge money for everything he did oj made hits for young people who didn't even have money to pay for session as long as you had talent oj yeah, yeah, come 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 what you're saying you know he was thousands of people i don't want to mention names whole lot of superstars that this place for baja is the place i first saw them the very first time a lot of big artists in this country right now this is the first place i saw them literally as nobody you is with me tomorrow we will show each other talking yeah don't be afraid oh. don't, don't. don't be afraid oh. no, yeah. oh, my, oh my landlady nothing yeah. you know how much me i only watch you're not afraid you're not afraid girl. you're not afraid girl. one day we are gonna make the money he also produced Two Face Edibia's album Grass to Grace, which, according to him, remained the most tasking project he had done. His biggest break was with Two Face's African Queen, setting a yet to be beaten record not just in Nigeria but also in Africa. 10 million copies in Nigeria alone and 8 million copies internationally, this made him the most sought after producer in Nigeria and some regions of Africa. The only one I ever see with a smile so bright hey, And just yesterday You came around my way Away from his work life, most people had no idea who OJB really was. Selfless, humble and loving were a few of the words used by his close friends and family to describe the legendary producer. He was a workaholic who never let his failing health hold him back from doing what he loved best, music. Doesn't stop him, even when he's not strong, so he used to come to him for help. He would still do it, not minding the state at which he is. So you decided you didn't change him. It was difficult going through that because you wake up one morning, it's one drama or the other. And then you try to solve that and then in a few weeks it's another thing. And then it used to come like crisis as well. You know, it comes for a certain period, it weighs him down, but as soon as he's gone, he's back on his feet. And you know, you're, when, you, when you come to him and you're like, why are you not resting? He's like, no, if I rest, my business dies. If I rest, my children, you know, will feel it. I am a man. I'll be there for my family. And no, I can't. I can't. I can't stay down. I can't stay down. That there's. I have a purpose, and I'm going to fulfill that. And that's what gave him the courage to always get up from the bed. He used to use this particular slogan. He's like, I have to pick myself up. So whenever he comes and he's done with it, he's like, I have to pick myself up, whatever happens. So that was what he believed in. Yeah, after the surgery, is, of course, there was, there was a change, you know. He had less energy, you know, to work for a long time, you know. And it, it wasn't easy for him to, I mean, yeah, he, he, he just had an operation and you know that, what you have been operated for can last for a few years. You know, we're talking about I mean, kidney here. Yeah, you know, anything can happen. It can shut down again. And so, so the way he saw life, he saw life more from a philosophical angle. Now he saw life from some people. He saw people also, some of his friends too, in another way. When you cry, he by your side. Girl, remember, I'm the one who's searching for light. When it rains, I'll be your shade. Thicker thin, no matter the way. Girl, remember, yeah, I'm the one who's searching. As a father, OJB was devoted to his kids and never missed out on opportunities to be with them or to participate in things that concerned them. As a husband, he was loving, wise and held his family together. Peace and togetherness was what he preached and what his three wives and eight children lived by. Contrary to common belief that a polygamous home is an unhappy home, OJB Jazro had a peaceful and loving household. He believed in what he had to do and that was touch lives and be there for his family. So he wants to come out, he wants to play with his kids, 
He wants to feed his children. He wants to, at times, if you tell me, please, baby, move, I'm in charge. And he's like, he does it better than me. You know, we used to laugh and brag about it. I'm like, uh, feel cool with yourself, right? You're raising them better than what I'm doing. And he's like, yeah. And then at times, they call me on the phone, I'm at work. And he's like, okay, tell me what we just did, you know, and then tell her where we just went to. And he loved going out with his kids. You know, he, he was so proud of his family. That was, that was the greatest thing in his life. He loved his family to pieces. I'll be strong. He married three wives. Mabel, fondly called Mama J, is OJB's eldest wife. Mabel has three lovely kids with the late music producer. Mabel stood by her alien husband during his battle with kidney failure, which later took his life. She did not only accompany him to India for a kidney transplant, she also donated one of her kidneys. A mother of three, June, otherwise known as Ama, is OJB's second wife. Ama once took up a career in music and churned out few songs which enjoyed massive airplay on TV back in 2003. OJB, who produced all her songs, got married to her during that period. Karade, a popular dancer, is OJB's youngest wife. A graduate of Olabisi Onabanja University, the beautiful lady who featured in a lot of musical videos as a dancer in early 2000s, used to be rapper Rugged Man's official dancer. Karaday is in her 30s and has two kids with a talented beat maker. It's heartbreaking at times when people who don't understand and who don't know feel that because he had a large family, that means it must have been chaotic, it should have been, it's, it's, it's a problem, it's this, is that. If they just got a glimpse of how happy he was and we were, well, I don't expect them to understand. It's wonderful though. And um, for the period of time that we were together, I, I, I think I want to take the good part of it. I don't want to, I don't want to shift my mind to what's happening now. So I want to remember the good part. That's the love, the care the wonderful moment that we have together and I always thank God for the wisdom that he imparted in me that's true OJB because I married him when I was young I was very young about 26 years old when I got married to him so he taught me how to grow up he's a wonderful person Living with him is a story you cannot even write. It's an experience you live to remember. Every day that I've been with him, every day that I've lived with him, has his own memory, has his own experience. So, every day that I've been with him, from the very first day I met him anyway, has been beautiful. Looking for some answers Why you're not there Want you to be closer But you're not there You're not there Oh yeah You're not there We could have waited up to stop together But you're not Wish to stay much longer, but you're not here. You're not here. Oh, yeah. You're not here. Looking for some answers. I'm looking for the love of my life. I try my best to be In June 2013, veteran music producer OJB Jezro revealed to Nigerians that he was suffering from acute kidney failure, a condition that left him a shadow of his former self.
He called on his friends and colleagues in the industry, as well as the general public, for assistance in raising 16 million naira to undergo a kidney transplant to save his life. In an interview with Heap TV, he spoke extensively about it, beginning with how the illness started. This is something that I more or less have been, you know, battling with for. I'll use the word battling intensively with for two years. Um, before now, it was just an off and on experience with maybe a high blood pressure issues and uh, once in a while a little pain down below there. But um, as of 2011, it became very intense. I had swollen feet, swollen stomach, and uh, swollen face, and all that. And so, by the time they had gotten to the place, uh, by the time they had gotten to the place, they discovered that um, the kidney was malfunctioning. But at that point in time, they could actually do something about it if they stepped down the, the blood pressure. And so, which we did in 2011. But you know, from 2012 to now, it's been an off and on two days, you know, you're down, you then you're bouncing back again. And after a while, you're down again, and you're bouncing back again. But um, as of this 2003, just like two, three months to be exact, it became uh, a serious situation whereby I can't eat, I can't drink. Quick, quick, let us make it even holy So I can take care of you And my baby, it's not easy girl You yeah, have been a star And at the end you ain't got to take her See, out there my fans up tell me But they don't even know that two is never pay me now It's not easy But I just have to form the a easy I... However, in 2015 It was rumored there had been a setback in his recovery he discredited that in a number of interviews with Heap TV, claiming he only visited the hospital for routine checkups. I'd like to clear the air that um, I don't have a relapse. Um, I'm hale and hearty. I'm okay. Um, it is normal after every transplant, if you ask and you check around very well, every other month you're supposed to go for your checkups. And which is normal. So if you, if if anybody had spotted me in the corridors of uh, of the hospital of Lasut or anywhere, it's a normal checkup that you do. Even in India, you expect to do checkups like maybe twice a year, and after a while, it's once a year. Then the rest is just your normal treatments that you do at home. So um, um, I, I'm I'm just shocked that people say that I've relapsed, the kidney has failed again. I'm now in Lasut. I'm there for. Uh, on admission and whatever it is. I mean, I'm here, I'm not on admission. This this is my, um, since I got back from India, because I traveled to India, um, you know, I have a foundation, OGB Foundation, which Hip TV has even come to cover one or two of our activities before. Um, we're, we're trying to run a situation where we have free health camps and see how we can partner with the hospitals there to open more dialysis centers through the Catholic community. It's an ongoing process. Uh, all this be happening would give us a chance to subsidize the price. So that's what took me to India. Despite the fundraising appeal and the kidney donated by one of his wives and many false dons, it claimed his life on June 14, 2016 at the Isola General Hospital. He is survived by his 87-year-old father, three wives and eight children. Thankfully, he died a fulfilled man. A candlelight procession was held in his honor on the day he would have turned 50, which is the fourth day of July 2016. On July 7, 2016, a tribute concert was held at the National Stadium Surulere Lagos in celebration of OJB's legacy. Tonight, when you start it, I say, yeah, never hear you start it, OJB, yeah! Rastafara, ever faithful, ever sure, concrete. My dad was a very good person, and then you know, he has touched so many lives. My dad is amazing, he's the best father in the world. And I'm going to miss everything about him. Shit,
say that I will miss my dad is going to be an understatement because the person that people saw on stage is different from the person at home. He was more than a giver. I, the truth is, the shoes are too big for me to fill. Everyone says you're the first son, you have a lot to do, you know. But the shoes are too big and I hope I, I make him proud wherever. <laughs> I find myself in the future. LJB was laid to rest at the Ikoi Cemetery in Lagos on July 8, 2016. We love you and we wish you were here. Looking for some answers Why you're not there Want you to be closer But you're not there You're not A number of celebrities had things to say about the prolific producer. He impacted not just the music industry but also the entertainment industry as a whole and his death has been deeply felt. He could sing, he was a good producer and then he's a good singer too. OJB has a lot to be, you know, attached to his name. Till tomorrow I have not seen any love song, you know, in the contemporary era that has stood the match of African Queen. For me, his legacy lives. This is the dude that produced one of the biggest songs in this country, African Queen. We cannot deny the fact. I will tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah, you are my African Queen. Last time I saw him, he was doing very well for himself. He walked up to me and said, oh, he likes my song, he likes what I'm doing. And I was so, so happy to meet him in person because I knew I've been hearing about him. He's actually one of the greatest producers in Africa, if you ask me. He's had a lot in the industry and uh, uh, his legacy lives on. OJB would uh, be remembered for uh, his contributions to the entertainment industry, uh, specifically the, the music industry. Is uh, somebody who really printed his name on the sands of time. When you remember songs like Africa Queen, you 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 just want to give it to to him as well. OJB is a legend. Is somebody you know, so many producers, so many people look up to, and you know, like it's, it's very sad to see him go. So he's so rest in peace. OJB, wherever you are, rest in peace. We're here. We we'll still represent you. We we'll love you. He's so rest in peace. It's okay. I don't know. It's, it's fine. He's, he's gone. He's, he's, he's gone. But may he so rest in peace. That's all I can say. OJB, rest in peace. AY says so. Sing with the angels, OJB Jezreel, because when you lived, you were an angel in the lives of many. You will be greatly missed, but never forgotten.